Hello, I am Knut Övby, creator of the Dungeon Crawler Toolkit for Unreal Engine. Uh, in this video I will show you how to set up a basic dungeon, uh, just to see uh, the general workflow of this toolkit. So first let's create a new level. Just use the default level. Now, since we have created a new project using the Dungeon Crawler Toolkit, a lot of stuff is set up for us already. So if we just press play in this level, you will see that we already have the UI here. So you can have the inventory stats, powers, etc. from the default characters that are defined in our data. I will show that in a different video. Um, and we can rotate with Q and E, uh, but you will see that we can't move if we press forward nothing happens and that's because the underlying dungeon is not built yet. So let's do just that. If we go to blueprints you will find here the core folder which has most of the essential blueprints for this toolkit. You will find the dungeon manager here. So we drag this into our world and we will see the bounds that define our dungeon. Since the Dungeon Crawler Toolkit is made for grid-based games, we will want to have our Dungeon Manager here conform to the grid of the editor. So uh, we will want to have the location it is placed on uh, on some multiplier of uh, the grid size we will be using. Uh, so if you have no other reason, I recommend just putting this at position 0 for all of these axes. For this tutorial, we're sticking with the default size of this grid, which is a tile size of 200. Uh, so we'll want to set up the engine so that we can have a default tile size, uh, a snap size of the Unreal Engine grid uh, that will be the same as the size we are using uh, for our grid here. We can do this by going to Edit and Editor Preferences. Uh, then we can search for Grid and we will find, there we are, the decimal grid sizes. We can add a new one and we can set it to be 200 and we can also drag this to be the appropriate place here. Uh, so from now on we will have a grid size uh, of 200 we can select here which is the same as the size we have uh, for our dungeon manager which will make uh, creating our dungeon a lot simpler. So if we now just resize and replace this floor we have the default level, uh, we should be able to walk our character around here. So we can now see that we can move and we move one tile at a time. And if we try to leave the bounds, we push into those bounds. Great. This dungeon is not particularly interesting though, so let's add some stuff. Uh, we can find here within the blueprints we have items and we can add uh, something here. So for instance we can add an axe for us to pick up. Uh, it's worth to note that uh, you can also just place the item blueprint directly which defaults to a sword uh, and you can just switch it to whatever so make another axe. So these two blueprints are functionally identical. Uh, so all of these are just child blueprints with this value set for just ease of placement. So if we now press play, we can go and we can pick up these axes. And now we have some interaction, but we have nothing to hit yet, so we should change that. Let's find some monsters in the monster folder. And we can here I can get one of these nice slimes. And perhaps a skeleton. And they work on the same principle as the items here. So you can just take this default monster and you can you can find uh, the monster type and you can also change this to anything uh, within the settings. And it works the same way. So if we now press play, we have some monsters. We don't have much equipment to, watch, to find them with and they've managed to block us in. Well, we can fight our way out and yeah, we've got our powers already set up. Got him. Okay, so we've got an exciting combat set up, but there's still not much dungeon to this place. So let's build some dungeon. Uh, yeah, let's not have the start position be in the very corner. We can move this guy. Oh wait, grid snapping on. There we are. 
and let's find some meshes to build our dungeon with. So we can create a room by placing an arch and some walls. And we can add some of those. Group these together. Make some more. And we can holding Alt here, by the way, to drag stuff out and to make this fit here. We'll change it up a bit like this. And there. Yeah, let's take one of these. And that's fine for our purposes. And we have a room. Great. Now next we might want to have a door, but we don't just want to use a regular mesh. We want to have an interactable door that we can open. So if we go instead of meshes dungeon, we have here in blueprints dungeon, we have several interactable objects, including a door. Now if we place this and rotate it, we can see that we have an interactable area here which uh, designates where we have to stand to be able to interact with this object uh, which looks fine and now if we open it we can interact with this door we can't move through it oh there's our skeleton and we have no weapons ah okay so we might want to add our weapons back um, Place them within reach, our axis, and yeah, this default mesh here is because it's resized, everything is a bit sunken down into it, I see, so I can just lower this down a bit, that looks better. And Lastly, let's add a tricky puzzle by having the player having to draw a lever to open this door. Uh, so we can place one of these levers, and let's go back to a grid size of 200 and then we can adjust it a bit afterwards so we can see it there and for this lever we want uh, pulling this lever to open this door so we can add in the powered actors and we can select this door and then for this door we don't want to have an interaction area it can be opened from we only want it to be able to open through this lever so we can uh, clear out these interaction click areas like this so now if we click play, we can pick up these axes, we can't open the door, but we can pull the lever and the door opens. Great. And now we have weapons, so time for revenge now. So those are the basics of how to set up uh, a dungeon in the dungeon crawler toolkit. Uh, now in the next one I will look into these various data tables where you can adjust and add new monsters, items, starting characters, etc. But feel free to look into these and play with them yourselves. They're fairly intuitive. Uh, but for now that's it. Uh, thanks for watching.